Hello class, today I'm going to be talking about restoration down at Ormon Beach. This is just a quick zoom in to the location that we will be focusing on, specifically the location that I went to to collect all this footage. Um, and this is just a 360 view of the um, Arnold Road, which is the road that you take before you enter the location that um, I was recording and that I will be highly focusing on. And this is just some footage um, of what it looks like to drive to Ormond Beach. And the reason why I included this is to show just what is around Ormond Beach, especially because we will be talking about how ecologically important this beach is. Also, take into consideration Ormond Beach does take approximately 1,500 acres in area this is pretty large so that means that this beach actually covers areas from port wainimi um, stretches over uh, areas of oxnard and um, hits uh, the border of the point magoo uh, naval base and um, in other footage you will be able to see um, kind of like what i'm talking about and again, this uh, footage is actually being taken on Port Wainimi Road, um, and soon we will we'll be hitting the 360 uh, footage that I showed earlier. Now, it is important to take note that once you hit Arnold Road, you start to see a little bit more of um, agriculture, but also industry off to the distance. One of the most um, notorious thing. Uh, that you see when you are driving on Arnold Road is the power plant owned by Gen On, which um, is expected uh, to continue operation until 2025. And another thing that you see right by the entrance of Ormond Beach is um, Agriman. So they have um, a little spot right there and typically you, you smell it before you see it. Um, and again, take into consideration, this is just one entrance point to access Ormond Beach. There are many, considering that this is a pretty large area, um, in here. So this is, uh, what it looks like when you arrive Ormond Beach. Um, this is also a footage of the wetland that we see when we get there. And I also included some footage of some of the signage that show um, the enclosed area for the plovers. And also right now you are looking at the little marsh uh, part of the beach. This is just uh, what the information says at the visitor site. So it informs visitors on um the snowy plovers what is available to them to visit and what it is not so the boundaries and it also communicates to them that there are no dogs allowed because it is a critically important habitat for birds okay and then this is just some footage of some signage that we see when we enter the beach on the california leastern and the snowy plovers and right now there's just um, showing the fencing that is used to protect um, the snowy plover protected area for when uh, they are nesting. Um, this is another close up of the fence that you will see right now. And of course the power plant in the background um, that I talked about early in the video. This is a little picture that is drawn by a, a child that is actually attached to the fence to um, in an effort to um, bring on children to communicate what's going on at Ormond Beach and engage the community and engage uh, students early on, which is pretty cool. And this is some of the fencing that we see um, that is a part of like private property owned by the government. This fence actually stretches all the way down to the shore, um, all the way to the entrance. So that is going to be one of the first things that you see to your left when you enter um, Ormond Beach. And then right now, this is just um, some footage of the sand dunes that we see at Ormond. And it's really cool because um, Ormond is one of the few dune transition zone marshes system. As we talk about managing uh, ecologically important place, we often have to take into consideration managing debris. And this is just some of the 
uh, most popular items that I was able to find along the shore. So plastics and styrofoams, um, which again, poses the question of how do we effectively manage a critically important um, space for birds like the plovers and the least terns. Um, and also, what does the coexistence look like with humans, you know, recreational activities, fishing, just simply walking or having those one or two visitors that don't follow the rules and bring their dogs onto the shore. Um, this is just some footage of the birds um, that we see along the shore. Again, very small birds. Um, so just a close up of that. And then this is some footage of the snowy plovers that I was able to capture that day. Again, very small bird, very hard to get on video. And this is just a screen recording of a very important website, the Coastal Conservancy. And I'm just showing you uh, two ways that you can access um, Ormond Beach Project. So one being the top up above, um, and then that one being on the side. And then when you click either either or uh, just scroll all the way down and select the south coast region which is where ormond beach uh coastal access uh, project is located in um and then for context this project was introduced in 2019 they actually had a hearing at oxnard uh to get the public's opinion um on what they want this project to look like because again this is going to be tailored to ensuring access to the beach um, considering that right now it looks very intimidating and it is very much a hole in the wall um, when you click um, the project you can actually view the draft plan that was actually uh, shown at the uh, meeting at the public meeting um, and with this project in particular some of the coastal themes that we have been talking about in class we see it in here which is how do we ensure protection of critically endangered um, species like the california least tern and the snowy plover while also ensuring access to the community um and not just um access but also making the space accommodating for different individuals um and then this is just a screenshot of the map or the layout of the area but yeah thank you so much for watching and hope you enjoyed